Hello everyone, my name is Lu He, and uh, today I'm gonna make a presentation about uh, why buying IP address is a scam today, but it doesn't have to be, and how Telecos would become the next trillion dollar company. Well, we will explore the shift in how we treat IPv4 addresses, transforming them from lead resources into true owned assets. And why this matters for business and policies, especially here in ITW. And why this matters for every single company in the infrastructure business and what's going to change everybody's business from this point on. Let's get started. The billion dollar IPv4, right? Cloud Giant has purchased millions of IPv4 addresses. Amazon has purchased nearly 100 million IPv4 addresses, cost them billions of dollars. Alibaba, Huawei, Tencent, all these top tech firms on the planet Earth has at least spent hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in the past decade in the IPv4 addresses. One thing they probably miss in the detail is the billion dollars they spent actually didn't give them the ownership of the IP address they saw they buy. Imagine tell your CFO a $3 billion asset you just purchased isn't actually yours. It's a wake up call. Let's first look at IR agreement. Five regional internet registries across the world manage the registrations of IPv4 addresses across the globe. They coordinate each other and uh, they talk to each other and they make sure uniqueness of your registration, which is essentially the value of the IPv4 addresses, a unique registration in a global coordinated database. But if we look at all of the agreement, and I've coded all of them here from Aaron for North America, Ripen CC for Europe, and uh, APNIC for Asia and Pacific, Lightning for Latin America, and Afrin for Africa. They all have one thing in common. They all said it's not a property. What you have is actually a service agreement with a private company, one of the five, and provide you a registration service. That's all. It doesn't guarantee you any sort of property ownership and it does not guarantee you any sort of perpetual ownership to the property at all. It's just a registration. Because you don't have ownership, the regional internet registry technically as a private company can change it at any time they like. And this is what really happening today. Back to the last slide, which I just said, the large score provides spend billion of dollars what they're actually buying here. They are actually buying a rice to have a contract with the regional internet registry to lease those IPs. Yes, you are still leasing it. You are still paying annual fees to keep those IPs and you still don't have ownership of it. So you're basically paying a 30 years equivalent of leasing fees to lease it. Isn't that sound ridiculous? And it is. So that's why, in the as title suggests in my presentation, why buying IP address today is actually a scam because nobody can buy them. None of the five IRs recognize the ownership of the IP addresses. The next slide, which is the IPv4 exhaustions. The IR has been served a wonderful rule of distributing IP address across the globe in the first two decades of its existence. But that rule has disappeared about a decade ago since the emergence of the secondary market. And if you go to an area and arrive today, you will be turned away to put on a long wait list. This shortage has created IP alternative market where address traded for $50 plus, a 3x increase in the recent years. It's a simple economy when supply is fixed to a near zero and demand keep rising, a market fills a gap. So what we do today, LaRousse owns a lot of IP addresses. We are just registering with one of the IRs and we fill in the gap. Instead of have you turned away by Ripen and Aaron, you can come to us and directly lease from us. But today that's not the actual main point I'm gonna talk about. We are secondary market provider, but we can only provide so much and guarantee so much of liability if the ownership is not recognized. Here is the opportunity. If, let's say just if, if the ownership of the IPv4 address was actually recognized, if the, the full liquidity was actually unleashed, if the five IRs instead of saying all the global IP belong to that five private company, instead belong to every single ISP here in the room, what is gonna happen? We will have a full functional IP address market with full ownership and full liquidity. 
and that could have bring the biggest wealth generation for telecom industry have ever seen before. Today, if you think about it, a single IP will cost 0.1% of its service values. An IP costs 30 cents per month if you lease from us, for example. And uh, it enables a service cost $300, a cloud server, for example. It's only 0.1% of a service enabled. But it is a service enabler. You can't do business without that IP. Just imagine if it's a rise to 30% of the service cost. If it's a rise 300 times today's value. Holding of IPv4 addresses will surpass the market capitalization of many telecoms today. All the telecom executives, you will be watching your market cap 10 times just by fully recognize the ownership of the IP address your entire company operated with. This is huge and this is necessary. Because today, all the telecom, all your life food, all your entire data business are in the hand and on the chalk points of those five private companies as I just mentioned. They own those IP addresses. They can disable you at any time. They can clap a national internet at any time because you don't own those IPs. So from financial perspective, from security perspective, the telecoms, the ISPs, we need to own those IP addresses. If you look at the policy dynamic, especially here among IRs, it's still made mostly by techies. It's believed in a central distribution, central ownership, and it's very much like, you know, some government in the past 20 centuries. And we all know it doesn't work very well. Privatization and commercialization is what drives the internet to today's scale what connects everybody. It's a decentralized world. We should not go back to embrace a centralized management of the one key components of the internet, the unique registration. And let's say who is the biggest benefactor if my vision realized? That's actually have a very interesting answer. I think it's some of you guys in the room, especially if you're doing IPv4 business, you know the answers. Yes, the US government. If my vision of IPv4 ownership realized, 30% of US national data will be wiped out. Because the US government at this point still owns 13% of the internet. And that will translate nearly $10 trillion in the market capitalization if IPv4 ownership entirely realized. So it's in everybody's interest, from government to telecom to the private sector, from security perspective that we don't have a central chalk point of the internet to the commercial perspective that the market cap of every telecom also the government who wants probably pay off their national debt I guess at this point the value of IPv4 is essential, critical and is there no reason why we don't have it today? Let's see what that means for the telecom industry players, right? So as a cogent, right? One of the largest uh, backbone providers on the internet it's today's market cap today, if you buy Cogen in its stock, it's about 50 ish dollars. It was in total 2 point some billion dollars in its market cap. But at $50 valuation, the 38 million IP Cogen owns will value nearly $2 billion, which means the entire Cogen global backbones will only value less than a billion dollars. And just imagine. If there's the full ownership of IPv4, if there's the full liquidity of IPv4, Cogen, its IP address alone would be worth 300 times more, which means the Cogen today of $2.6 billion market cap will be worth at least 600 billion, if not a trillion dollars. And that's just not coaching alone. The British Telecom, the BT, have 5 to 10% of its market value in the IPv4 addresses. Same for NTT data. And GTT recently started the IP address of their 7 million unused IP address and recognize its value. The valuation of all these familiar names will be 10 times, 100 times more. There's no better or bigger wealth generation ever happening in the infrastructure sector ever. How we make it happen? Well, it takes steps, obviously. We can't build a room in one day. It takes steps for people to change the policies across globe, get consensus, get recognitions, and have telecom to understand and recognize. But one thing you can do today. The regional internet registry is reviewing its founding document called ICP2. 
And that document established a criteria of establishing a regional internet registry and de-recognizing it. There's one policy we can put through towards the first step of full IPv4 ownership. That is called a number probability. Number probability means now you have five regional internet registries. If there's a policy change, if you are not happy with one of the regional internet registries, if there's a corruptions, bullying happening with one of them, you're stuck with them. If they want to reclaim your IPs, there's not much you can do. They're massive legal recourse. But if we put a requirement for the regional internet registry to re exist, which is number probability, which that means if you have a problem with regional internet registry, if you're not happy with that service, if you think their membership fee is too high, you have rights to take your registration to another one. That will encourage competition. That will help all the IRs start to recognize their member-based organizations that they need to work for the members. And if they don't, people will leave. And that's the first step to the IPv4 ownership. Everybody can go to the NRO website here and uh, to NRO.net if you need any help. My company stands right around the corner. We're happy to help you and guide you to make a comment about number probabilities and uh, get feedback to NRO. Here is a link. I know it's a bit long. Please do come to our booth and we'll help you if you need any help to make comments. And please do make it from your corporate mailing address so that make it serious. There's no excuse for the IR management to say, we don't want it because community don't want it. No, community want it. The IR has come up with their first ever draft since 2001 of the ICP2. But in that draft, they still say they want monopolies. They still say that they want uh, all the IRs not overlapping and competing with each other. And we need to stop that. So I urge you as a community, need to tell them those people in the top and make them no excuse. The community wants own their IP addresses. The community wants have the internet decentralized and put it back in the hands of telecoms and ISPs, not some centralized choke points. Let's action now. Thank you very much. Let's lead the IP revolution and uh, decentralize the internet. Thank you very much.